Hi, everyone, and welcome to the talk on Bent TV. I'm Matthew. Um, and here at the talk, we like to kind of give young LGBTI people, or have at the talk with young LGBTI people, uh, the talk that they wouldn't regularly get from, I guess, their parents, that a lot of straight people do get about the birds and the bees. You know, when people are coming to terms with their identity, I guess there are a lot of things they don't get, there are a lot of outlets that are missing for them to actually engage or explore these kind of things. So, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about that. Um, here today, I'm joined by Jasmine, Michael, and Chrissy. Thanks for coming in, guys. Thanks for having me here. Thank you. Um, and today we're looking at the issue of uh, racism in the queer community, but specifically sexualized racism. So, you know, if you look uh, on online apps, I mean, even in real life, you know, there's still a lot of racism in our community. And I guess we're interested in exploring that. So be to begin with, I guess, I was curious to hear from the panel, you know, if you have experienced or you're aware of what it is like, particularly, let's start with Michael. Um, is there racism in the gay community? <laughs> No, no, yes, obviously. <laughs> um, of course, there's racism in the gay community, specifically sexualized racism, I think is really prevalent. Um, because this idea that we think of our sexuality as something biological that we can't choose, and therefore if, if a white person, for instance, um, I think it just says that they're, you know, on their grinder profile, like no Asians or no black people or mm -hmm. something, they think, well, that's biological, it's not my fault. And, th and then their racism goes completely unquestioned. And so I yeah. think it's really important for white people in particular, but I think all people as well to really question the ideas that they've internalized about race, specifically when it comes to sexual attraction, because... I think that's how they defend yeah. it a lot of the time as well, because if someone gets called out on something they've written on an online profile, um, they'll just say, oh, it's just a preference. Like, But the way mm. they even express it to begin with can be really problematic and quite offensive to a lot of people in the community. Um, but now, I mean, Jasmine and Chrissy, from a queer women's perspective, I guess, does it manifest in the same ways? Is there racism in that community as well, or sexualized racism in particular? Well, I'm thinking about the, the app Her, mm -hmm. which is for queer women. And I know from flicking through it that I've never seen anything that's like, what you guys have, which is, can be some really awful things like no curries or I don't know if I'm using the right terms, no, no rice, Asians. Yeah, people are or rice queen yeah, or something yeah. like that. <laughs> I've never seen that Me before. Neither. Yeah. So I'm. I'm sure it curious. happens, but I've never experienced it. Never heard of anyone, any women experiencing the no. same to the, to, to the same degree that gay men experience mm -hmm. it on apps like Grinder or whatever. Why do you think that might be? I mean, that's an interesting point as well, because I know, yeah, flicking through any app, you'll see, easy, yeah. undoubtedly, there'll be people that will write really pretty horrible things. It's really overt as well. Yeah. Like, in everyday life, like, a lot of white people are, like, really, you know, covert with their racism. Like, they don't like to be, too, you know, the idea of being called a racist is, like, the worst possible thing that could happen. Mm -hmm. So, like, but on apps, they'll just, like, so explicitly mm -hmm. say, like, no Asians or something, or even, what like, no spice, yeah. no, you know, like, these really offensive racist terms. Yeah completely like unquestioningly and just it's easy to do online as well yeah, when you're behind a true. keyboard but why do you think it's so prevalent why do you think it's more prevalent amongst with, males amongst gay than men? do you yeah. think it's like because it's um more of a sexualized like it's more like overtly sexual where Perhaps, in, like yeah. on certain apps like on tinder for instance even if you're like m m like gay male tinder mm -hmm. There's no, you, I, I, my experience is you don't see as overt kind of sexualized racism on Tinder because it's more of a dating app. Where with Grindr or mm -hmm. Scruff or, you know, whatever those apps where it's like the, um, it's a lot more, I guess, sexual mm -hmm. or like hookups is a lot more common or expected, then the racism is like, I guess more prevalent. That's true. I mean, the interesting thing I'm thinking about, because I mean, like, obviously, when you look through an app, it's obvious. Like, I identify that clearly as racism when someone writes something like that. However, I imagine in the community, women and men alike, there would be people that would have perhaps sexual preferences and stuff like that. I wonder, like, where do we draw the line, or how do you perceive that? So, if someone has a particular preference in the bedroom uh, for someone of a particular back cultural background, I mean, do we? Is that sexual racism in any form, or how like how is it distinguished? Like, I mean, obviously that overt racism is clear, but I think where it becomes a bit more grey is when someone says, "Oh, I actually prefer to date, you know, Asian guys," or "I prefer, I mean, whatever." But uh, I mean, how wh wh how do you guys see that in the community? I think you definitely have to be asking why, like, mm -hmm. what's your reason for wanting to date mm -hmm. certain races, um, and it's see where well, it sounds kind of like on the apps with mm -hmm. guys that. Has anyone say no white people? No, I just it's haven't just, seen that in my life. So, no. <laughs> okay. so it sounds like it's that whole ideal of like the white being the... Hierarchy. Yeah. Of yeah. Okay. And I also imagine, you know, when you said about the reasons why, you know, if someone says, you know, rather than they only want white people, they only, they're only looking for it, let's say uh, they're interested in Asian men or... Uh, 
Indian men or whatever, um, the if the reason behind it is also kind of fetishizing, I think that can also play into racism a lot as well because Definitely. that naturally the reasons behind it is very rooted in stereotypes, stereotypes. and cliches and yeah. putting someone in a box that they're obviously not in. Mm. Um, but even like racist stereotypes, like harmful stereotypes yeah, exactly. as well. Yeah. Like even you know the idea like black men have bigger penises Hypersexual, or something. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's 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 a really yeah. negative stereotype, even though it's like supposedly a compliment. It's like not at all. Yeah. yeah. At the risk of a shameless plug, I read an article on racism in the gay community earlier this year, and the people I spoke to <laughs> said that. Like, they were saying, like, on a weekly basis, one guy in particular was saying, like, they, he always gets hit up with messages saying, oh, is it true what I've heard about this? And, you know, do you hear this? And it's one of those things where people that say this, I mean, they mustn't even, uh, even question... I mean, like... There's no self-awareness, you know, if you say something like that with someone, they're not even thinking how that might affect the other person or what the connotations or background around that is. I mean, do you think it's just because people that are kind of perpetuating these kind of racist stereotypes and saying these things online, you know, they're just not aware about their actions? Or do you think it's just, I mean, do you think they are? I don't know. Aware I think it, it kind of comes back to what Michael was saying, how people just think that's my preference. Like, I can't help it. I'm not mm. responsible. Like, this is just what I'm attracted to. But they're not digging further than that and wondering where are these... Yeah, what's this rooted in? What's this based on? Well, I think it's exactly like what you said. The important question is, if you do have racial sexual preferences, is to ask yourself why. Mm. Like, why is it that you are not attracted to this race or attracted to this race? As if an entire race of people look the exact same. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm. But it's like, obviously asking why is really important, and that's where you can really get to the root of, like, these harmful ideas that you have. Mm. But for some people, that's really hard. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to kind of ask yourself, why do I feel this? Especially for queer people about their sexuality, because we've been told as a survival you know, mechanism is to not question your sexuality at all. Like, at my sexuality, I'm here, I'm queer. Like, I was born this way, I'm not changing at all. And mm -hmm. so for us to then question that goes against everything that we've been taught as like a survival mechanism. And has and people have obviously looked at gay, the sex lives of gay people is very negative for a long time. So when you feel confident in the way you express your sexuality, I mean, mm. to then have to question it again and wonder, I mean, that may play into it, I guess. Totally. Um, unfortunately, that's all the time we have today. But thank you so much for joining me again, guys. Thank you. Um, and thank you so much for joining us here at the talk on Bent TV. We'll see you next time.